Howdy folks, just a work in progress update on the new enemy AI system. So we've got a bit of a boss battle here. Uh, basically we've set up our enemy with one of the new enemy AIs. It basically has three phases, phase one, phase two and phase three. Um, and we've got a bit of a camera zone here with a trigger. So when we walk through this uh, one-way trigger in red here, it will basically switch the camera zone to this blue box. Uh, it will show a dialogue where you can talk to the enemy and then it will begin the boss battle by enabling the enemy. So if we have a look in the enemy phases, uh, basically the idea is you start this enter action and you play this state called entering where we're going to play a, an animation of the alien getting into the uh, mech then we uh, kind of activate the mech when it takes a step forward and then we go into our main sort of idle state and there's three different ways to exit that state if you take a certain amount of damage six hits in this case then we're going to go to phase two if the enemy's target which is the player gets within four units we're going to trigger this stomp event we're also going to send an action called stomp, which we'll use to trigger a camera shake. On the other hand, if a timer expires after 0.75 seconds, the enemy is going to shoot his, uh, his cannon. Um, if you come close while he's doing that, it'll get interrupted and go back to the stomp, trigger the stomp. Otherwise, after one second when the shoot finishes, it's going to go back the idle state and we'll keep cycling through those states until you take the damage. If you take that damage then you'll go to phase two. So in phase two we basically make the uh, character of the enemy I should say invulnerable so invulnerable times just a very large number so basically he's invulnerable for the whole the rest of this phase uh, and basically we have a wait state where you pause very briefly and then it triggers a charging state. Uh, when that charging state completes, it waits, then it charges again, and so on. Each time it finishes a charge, it also increments the counter. So there's kind of like a loop counter built into the enemy, and we can use an interrupt to say, no matter what else is happening in the state, we've got an interrupt. When the counter reaches the value of two, we're gonna to go to phase three. So finally, phase three is quite similar to phase two. Uh, it, it charges back into a certain position, uh, then it becomes vulnerable again, so it can take dam be damaged now. Uh, it idles for one second, and then it does this same stomp action, but this time we send an extra event called Rockfall, which is used to trigger some uh, spawners, which spawn a bunch of rocks that can damage the player. Now, it's not the complete battle, we still need a few extra phases. Um, and also some way to make the enemy die. At the moment he'll take damage and uh, he will die, but there's nothing to actually handle that. Um, so we'll have a look at the actual battle in a second. The other thing I think is worth having a look at is there's another interrupt over here for damage. So whenever the enemy is damaged, uh, basically we've turned off the normal damage handling. So we, we tick this box here, continue movement on damage, which means now the AI has to handle damage or else it'll just continue moving normally. And we've got three different damage filters here. The first damage filter says when I'm in any state, you could say when you're in a specific state, but when, when I'm in any state, uh, if the damage type is fire, we're going to s filter this damage and actually reduce the damage to zero. So effectively we're making the character immune to fire damage. Alternatively, if we get a big hit, which is any type of damage, any state with a damage minimum damage of two, we're going to play the big damage animation. And we're going to make the character invulnerable for 0.5 seconds. Finally, if we just take normal damage or any other damage with just a damage type of one, a damage amount of one, we're just going to make the character invulnerable. We're also going to show that to the player just using an event responder. So. When the damage uh, is min damage one, max damage one, we're going to flash, play this effect called flash in red, 
And if we take more than two damage, regardless of the max damage, we're going to play a, a different flashing effect where it flashes blue. Okay. Let's have a look at the whole thing put together. I'm just going to pick up this pistol. Uh, let's just trigger the event. So that's passing through the trigger, starting the dialogue. Having a bit of an argument. And we've got an option so we can start the dialogue over again. We can ask the boss uh, for coins. Uh, if you do that, he actually gives you coins and there's no battle. But instead, let's challenge him by saying, prepare to die. Now it's playing those animations we talked about. Now it's idling and into shoot. And it'll keep cycling back and forth every second or so. Now if we get close, it'll try and stomp us. And if we shoot him, I think the hitbox is just a little bit higher. He'll flash red. Now if we changed our ray gun uh, to shoot fire damage, then we wouldn't be able to hurt the enemy at all. Taking damage ourselves though. On the other hand, if we change it to something other than fire, let's say back to electrical and give it a higher damage amount, we should see a different effect. There should be a very brief animation of the enemy moving back and then a different color flash. See how he sort of crouched down? The, the main difference here is that kind of damage would interrupt him if he was midway through shooting, we'll actually stop him shooting. I don't know if I'll be able to time, there we go. Whereas the red damage of damage amount one uh, doesn't actually interrupt the shoot. Um, now if we shoot him again, I think we're going to trigger the next phase. Uh, one more maybe. Oh, if I can do it. Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, so now he's just charging back and forth. And there's a counter of two, so that's one lap. We'll do another lap. We'll just stay up here. It's actually quite easy this stage. Once you realize the platform is there. He's going to charge back into position. And he's going to go into his third phase where he's doing stomps. And you'll see the rocks falling. But he's back to vulnerable now, so we can shoot him again. But that's pretty much the end of the battle because we don't have any uh, death animations. Uh, yeah, so coming along pretty well. Um, probably will add some more interrupt types. Um, there are some, so the green boxes are effectively actions, the red boxes are interrupts, the purple boxes are damage filters, and the grey boxes are your animation states. Um, so there's a couple of other types of actions, like for example, if we want to start the battle again, we could say, um, let's add, yeah, there's a log one, so that'll just write something to the console. Entering the idle state, for example. Just draw a line there. Um, hit play. I think I've got persistence off. So I think we've got the sword this time. You'll notice in the dialogue, uh, let's go to the console here. In the dialogue, we've got a slightly different option choice. Um, because we're holding the sword, we can say surrender, I have the gold sword, but he's not going to surrender. And uh, after we clear this dialogue, we'll expect him to go into the idle state and we should get a message in the console. And there we go, we see a message down here in the console. Probably the other thing worth noting is that an AI doesn't actually control the movement, it just controls the state. So, if you look at the AI, um, it has some things like hearing radius and sight and things like that you're probably familiar with from other enemies, but uh, there's nothing here tying those different uh, phases to the actual movements that, that control what the character does. 
All right, so we still use a distributor. It basically looks up the states that are set by the enemy, and for each state you can tie it to a specific movement. So for example, the uh, entering uh, state is tied to the play animation only, basically playing some animations. Uh, the idle state is another animation, the deploying state is another animation. Shooting right uses a simple shoot, uh, so it's shooting a specific projectile. And, and so on and so forth for each state. So you basically have to pick for which state what movement you want to, to uh, execute. Um, I mean, part of this is just because there's not a great way to bind um, scene objects to uh, scriptable objects. I mean, I know we do that in the item editor, for example, by automatically creating dictionaries. But it actually has a, a pretty nice benefit here because it means you can use the same AI to control different types of enemies and play different movements for those enemies. For example, you might have many enemies that patrol back and forth, and then when the character gets close or when they hear the character, you want to do something. Now, for some of those enemies, it might be run away. Uh, for other enemies, it might be shoot. For other enemies, it might be charge in and do melee attack. You could actually use a similar AI, or even the same AI, to handle all of those different enemies just by mapping the, the states to the appropriate animations, uh, appropriate movements, sorry. Um, for more complex uh, enemies, you know, like a boss, you probably wouldn't have a high level of reusability. It's just you know, a two-stage two process. One is to define the states, and the second is to map those to the different movements. Anyway, this feature should be out uh, in Platformer Pro 2.2, which I'm hoping to get out uh, before the middle of the year, probably towards the, the end of June. Thanks, guys.